ASCO 2024 in Chicago coming up is full of information that's not just for what I see, which is immunotherapy and uh, cutaneous malignancies like melanoma. It's data that comes from a couple of abstracts that I love, which are relatable to multiple solid tumors. Uh, we've all eagerly awaited um, Christian Blanc's data from Nadina, which is a neoadjuvant versus adjuvant approach to melanoma. And that's a plenary, it's a LBA2. And that looks like at two cycles of ipilimumab, nivolumab, and then surgery versus surgery and adjuvant in stage three high-risk melanoma. Obviously, it's a plenary, so there's a lot to take from it. And it's important for us to know that this is relatable to multiple solid tumors as immunotherapeutic or checkpoint neoadjuvant therapy is becoming important in other solid tumors, not the least of which is non-small cell lung cancer. So I think there's a lot to come from Nadina and how we look at neoadjuvant approach versus an adjuvant, and then also there'll be an update by Jeff Weber of the Moderna adjuvant approach, which looks at a uh, neoantigen vaccine with pembrolizumab. So it's looking at, at those two in an adjuvant situation. Why is that important? When you look at the strength of neoadjuvant therapy, it's the idea to be exposed to all of those tumor-associated antigens that you lose when the surgery is done. Well, maybe that's obviated by making this type of Moderna vaccine, where you can still see those antigens, 34 neoantigens, and not have disease in place. So that's the next step I see, in a push and pull between neoadjuvant and adjuvant, plus some sort of personalization. And as we move forth, uh, in the oral sessions, Sajeev Thomas will be presenting some data on an IOVANCE trial that was a untreated cohort of patients who were given TIL therapy plus pembrolizumab. This is updated data, now more mature. The initial data showed a significant response and benefit. This presentation will not put to rest what's the right first-line therapy but may help us decide in hard to treat or primary resistant cancers when we can understand and identify them, maybe move them to TIL therapy earlier or even an initial therapy with TIL. This comes upon the back of data presented from the initial IOVANCE trials in a hard to treat melanoma, mucosal melanoma, 12 patients, uh, there was a 50% response rate, that's the highest response rate. Small cohort of patients, but it was important because the response was uh, regardless of uh, tumor mutational burden, et cetera. So it's bringing more. And this is on top of TILVANCE, which is the first line trial of TIL uh, plus PAMBRO versus PAMBRO. This is a major phase three trial that's accruing right now. So we're building you know, some of those blocks to understand who needs it earlier, what to do. And with the approval of IOVANCE's tumor infiltrating lymphocyte therapy, we still need some of these questions answered. Uh, let's move on to something very personal. I'll be presenting uh, in the oral session the data from the IMTAC uh, F106C from Immunocore. And this is updated data from data that was presented at ESMO a couple of years back. And this is similar to Tabentafusp, a bispecific at one part targeting CD3, at the other part targeting PRAIM. Uh, this is the main difference between Tabentafusp, which targets GP100. And why is this important? Well, PRAIM is expressed on a multitude of solid tumors. If you go back to that primary presentation, it's expressed on, and we've seen responses in ovarian, um, non-small cell lung cancer, uh, cutaneous and uveal melanoma, and a whole host of other tumors. Uh, we've seen that these types of 
by specifics or MTACs are tolerable with combination of checkpoint inhibitor. And so this will be an updated data set of about 40 uh, plus patients with melanoma. And this is now a trial in a randomized phase three fashion, looking at that PRAME MTAC plus uh, nivolumab versus nivolumab alone or nivolumab or latlamab. And so that's a major phase three trial accruing at this point. What we'll present is possibly some predictive markers to response for these types of T-cell therapies. And that's based on the T-cell fitness. Um, it's based on PRAME staining, et cetera. So learning a lot more about a therapeutic that is viable in the second line. Guess what? I missed one of my favorites here, and that is uh, Relativity 48 being presented by Paulo Acierto. And Relativity 48 is an amazing trial looking at not just one, but two and three. Three checkpoint inhibitors together in uh, malignant melanoma. So advanced melanoma being treated with ipilimumab, nivolumab, and relatlimab. So it's just showing how we're moving forward. On the heels of a presentation by Hussein Taubi that'll update Relativity 47, which was the randomized trial of relatlimab, nivolumab versus nivolumab, which led to the FDA approval of that combination, we now see a triplicate a triplet therapy in melanoma. And as we see that data, there is already another trial that's accruing at centers throughout the U.S. that's not only giving ipilimumab, nivolumab, and relatlimab, but it's adding an IL-6 uh, inhibitor, cerilimab. So what's happened is at the speed of light, we have moved from single agent, the combination to triplet, and now quadruplets that are tolerable and set a standard for the future of our trial design. You know, we can combine checkpoint inhibitors, we can combine them with other types of therapies, and we may be able to push response, get higher complete response, more durability, and I look forward to being able to dissect that data at ASCO 2024. I'd like to end with something that grabs everyone's attention when you hear these words, and that's AI, artificial intelligence, and how it can help us, whether it's with radiology or pathology, but how can it help us in our clinics? And I was struck with the increasing number of abstracts and presentations looking at what we will in the future call the beginnings of the utilization of AI to help our patients. I think that's important in a, many, uh, a multitude of ways, whether it's looking at tumor response, tumor kinetics, uh, looking at taking whole hosts of information from multiple trials and putting them together, um, looking to decrease workload in a group of physicians, us oncologists, where our numbers are dwindling as our patient volumes are increasing. So ASCO 2024, very busy, lots to do, lots to see, and I look forward to discussing that after ASCO with all of you.